In this video, we will be speaking about how Corona, COVID-19 virus, will affect the architecture, engineering, and the construction industry. This video will not cover anything about health and safety, or else the impact in the global economy. And I believe there will be more reliable resources just right out there. So it will solely focus on architecture, engineering, and construction industry. Please attend in the survey right above there if you think there will be an impact on the industry. I will be also sharing some tips towards the end of this video where you can understand how to reduce or eliminate the impact you might potentially get from this kind of issues. Before that, let's try to understand a little bit more about our construction industry. Our industry is very traditionalized, so it doesn't take as much as innovation and technology as the other industries out there, such as manufacturing industry. We even try to take some principles from other industries, like lean manufacturing principles, which was originated by Toyota Production Systems, TPS. If you would like to learn more about those, please comment below, or if you want to highlight any other topics you would like to listen, we, can, we will be more than happy to create a content for you. In the contrary to the manufacturing industry, the architectural engineering and construction industry is very dynamic. So there are loads of projects going out there, and in every single project, there are various stakeholders. And most of the time, if you, for example, an architectural company, you have 20, 30, 50 projects. In each project, you have different stakeholders. Therefore, there are different processes, there are different mindsets, there are different people, there are different system and procurement methods involved within those projects. And every project is different, so you cannot use one unique system, like in the manufacturing, and apply this throughout your supply chain. Therefore, it leads to the issues and problems with communication and collaboration. When there's a problem on communication and collaboration, it affects the efficiency in the supply chain of information and flow, which leads to the either reduction in the successful outputs of the project or else unprofitable outputs for certain stakeholders. We would like to eliminate such issues as, as much as possible because this will impact in the long run the whole industry. The industry does not realize that we are all in the same boat. If the boat starts sinking, we'll be all vulnerable to the impact. However, this comes from traditionalized systems and procurement methods. We are used to so much on the traditional way of working, so there are certain understanding of liability and information sharing. In traditional methods, the problem is that, that we would like to share as minimum as information as possible, meaning we don't want to take the liability. So the less information we give, the more secure we are, because we are not going to be pointed out or blamed that we are the one who made the mistake. That's why the, every stakeholder prefers to keep it in the balance of providing minimum information and try to bypass the project as much as possible. Again, this affects the project outputs and successful results, so it will impact the overall construction industry, especially if such issues occur, like the coronavirus and the globally, there is a bigger isolation, so even the communication was difficult within the work environment, now everyone is isolated. So the communication and the collaboration is going to be even more difficult with this kind of method. So we need to envisage how we can address those issues, and I will be providing you some tips within a couple of seconds. Before that, let's try to understand what other professionals or the industry has opinion about these things. In the construction news article, it states that there might be delays due to the absence of the staff and might create additional costs to the contractor, which will 
be incurred to the developers. On the Architectural Digest, it was published that remote workspaces might actually generate additional productivity. So we can actually see what kind of value proposition we have out of that, since we were like wondering it a lot for decades now. In Architect Magazine, it stated that there are certain companies who train their staff to learn tools to communicate and collaborate efficiently, which could reduce the potential impact of working remotely. Right now, there are lots of opinions over the internet, and everyone has different point of view. Let's discuss some of the tips I have been talking about. Number one is the mindset. You need to create a clear mindset, clear vision. that You would like to benefit all your stakeholders, the project owner, as well as your, yourself and your organization. In order to create that, you need to create a more efficient and effective collaborative environment. So all the stakeholders can keep hands to hands and can deliver more successful project output, which will impact the construction industry in the long run. The second tip will be using right tools and technologies right now. You should start involving the latest technology and tools to enable a collaborative and communicative environments so you don't waste time with production as well as communication of unnecessary data. So you can focus all your energy in productivity. We suggest using BIM tools for modeling and drafting, such as RECAD, Revit, Tecla, Bentley systems, and so forth. As well, if you'd like to learn more about those software in comparison, what kind of benefits it can bring to you, please comment below. We'll definitely like to make a video for you if you're really interested. And number three will be your process. The process is very important. So you need to understand your supply chain. How would you like to deliver that data? How would you like to deliver your knowledge, your expertise? So you, all the stakeholders and you yourself are happy from the project outputs. So you can really go ahead and deliver the results you are looking for. That's where BIM comes in. Because right now, the whole global world try to standardize the BIM procedures and methods. And there is a, even a document which was published early in 2019, which is called ISO 19650. That document illustrates the principles of how we can share information when the project between the project stakeholders. If you would like to learn about how to implement BIM into your practice, just click on this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel because every week we're going to post at least one video for you. Don't forget to turn your notification bell on. See you next time.